Josh. Scientists are learning more and more about the mind. It was almost like hunting a deer. And more and more about the minds of murderers. And the Eugene stood over her and, and shot her. Take the prefrontal cortex. It's what we use to plan things out, to make decisions, and to differentiate between right and wrong. Scientists realize that this part of the brain, it just doesn't work as well for a lot of people who commit murder. But it does for psychopaths. Before we explain that, we have to talk about the amygdala. This one's all about emotion. Most important for us, it's all about empathy. The amygdala and a psychopath, it's just not doing its job. Or, it's just not connecting to the part of the brain making decisions, including the decision to kill. Psychopaths and serial killers, they're good at planning out murders, and they're constantly seeking that high, but they don't care about the pain they cause. Now they're using brain scans in court. Scans can show how dangerous criminals are and keep them from getting paroled. But it can also keep murderers from being executed. He kept repeating himself uh, that the gun just went off. Now this is the question. Is a person with a damaged brain totally responsible for their actions? There's so much we don't know about the mind. But what we do know, the way we grew up, where we live, who we're surrounded by, it's all so important. And it can have just as much an effect on the minds of murderers. Alarming new information tonight that this killer's pattern of disturbing behavior extended back to his childhood. Even as a young boy, Omar Mateen was troubled and disruptive. A former classmate at Mariposa Elementary School in Port St. Lucie, Florida, tells CNN Mateen once threatened to bring a gun to school and kill everyone. That was in fourth or fifth grade. He was nine or ten years old. The classmate could not recall what punishment Mateen received, but said it was, quote, a very big deal at the time. Documents obtained by CNN from the St. Lucie County Schools show Mateen was disciplined 31 times between 1992 and 1999. These school records describe Mateen as, quote, rude and aggressive, and note he talked frequently about violence and sex. He was always a little out there. They didn't really have too many friends. Robert Zirkel rode the same bus route as Mateen during high school. Zirkel and other former classmates tell CNN in the days following September 11th, Mateen claimed Osama bin Laden was his uncle and made light of the attacks. He was acting like a plane, like he had his arms out. He was like making a plane noise and like he would, he made like a boom sound or like an explosion type of sound, fell in his seat and was like laughing about it and like it was a joke or something. My friends and I were like, if you don't, if you don't stop, man, it's going to be a problem. As a teenaged employee at Gold's Gym in Port St. Lucie, Omar Mateen was to be avoided. He had that kind of aura that I don't think people really wanted to engage him because they don't know where they would go. Stefan Kamvalius held personal training sessions at Gold's Gym. One of my clients, uh, she was um, completing her set on a squat rack and uh, she, you know, was in full stride all the way down and he made a derogatory statement about her anatomy, which I mean, it was just completely unacceptable and loud at that. Like, he wanted her to hear it. Staff members at Gold's Gym could not recall any disciplinary issues with Mateen. A few years later, he was transferred from a job as a security guard at a courthouse after making inflammatory comments about terrorism. That's when the FBI started investigating it. He said he hoped that law enforcement would raid his apartment and assault his wife and child so that he could martyr himself. Mateen's first wife said he verbally and physically abused her to the point that her family had to rescue her to get her out of the marriage. Stability, emotional instability, sickness, mentally, he was mentally unstable and mentally ill. That's the only explanation that I could give and he was obviously disturbed. Now these school records show that Omar Mateen repeatedly had interventions with school counselors, psychologists and others, but since the shootings, his father has repeatedly said that he thought his son was normal. Wolf? Brian, uh, was there a warning signal from a local gun shop owner some weeks before the massacre? 
There was, Wolf, according to the gun store owner himself. Uh, this is, gentleman's name is Robert Abel. He is the owner of Lotus Gun Works in a nearby town, Jensen Beach. He said that about six weeks ago, after Mateen came in trying to buy level three body armor and a bulk ammunition and asked odd questions, that his staff became concerned and that they contacted authorities. Now, according to law enforcement officials, uh, federal officials have no record of the Lotus Gun Works or any other store contacting them about Omar Mateen during that period. And the Martin County Sheriff's Office says the same thing. They don't have a record of it. The distinction could be in that they didn't just get it, they just didn't get a name associated with any call because the gun store owner does say that when they called authorities, they did not have a name, Omar Mateen. They just reported his odd behavior.